guys, I cannot believe how my home lab has evolved over the years. And I can't believe it's been a year now since my last home lab update and tour. A lot has changed and a lot has stayed the same for me. This is going to be a fun video showcasing what I have changed in the home lab from hardware to software to monitoring other tools that I'm using. And I want to share with you guys what I have changed and maybe the direction that I'm headed. So let's get into Home Lab 2023 Tour. First, let's start with the hardware. What have I changed this year in terms of hardware? Well, as you guys know, a couple of months ago, I released a video featuring the change to a Palo Alto PA440. So I've upgraded my home lab firewall. It's a fantastic uh, unit. The PA440 is very capable, powerful, it's fast, and it was a great upgrade from my existing PA220. Also, more recently, as you guys saw in my previous video, I added Intel Optane Storage to my vSAN cluster. Intel Optane Storage is extremely fast. As my video detailed, I am now hitting over 100,000 IOPS on the storage layer for my VMware vSAN cluster. And I have seen a noticeable difference in just day-to-day -day operations and the quickness with which everything is completing and the workloads that I've been able to throw onto my VMware vSAN cluster. And my VMware vSAN cluster has been able to handle anything that I've thrown at it. Also, I did streamline my cabling. I also detailed that in a video. Uh, I'm really happy with the results. I started the work of collapsing down some of the rack gear, making sure the cabling was the appropriate length and straightening everything up as far as where everything is housed in the server rack. So really happy with the results and I'm still working my way on the inside, looking at cable management options. One of the other cool little upgrades that I made as far as hardware is concerned, I installed two light bars in the server rack. I've got one up top and one on the bottom. And these are awesome from the standpoint of being able to see in the rack. How many times have you opened a server rack and you're uh, grabbing your phone, turning the flashlight on your phone on just to see a network port or to plug power into a server? These light bars have been a lifesaver and I really love having them added to the server rack. I have them on a switch so that they don't have to run all the time. I could just literally reach in the server rack, flip the lights on, and I can see everything that I need to see in the server rack. So that's been awesome. Aside from the Palo Alto firewall, on the network side of things, I haven't really changed anything. I'm still running 10 gig for my virtualization hosts via my Ubiquiti 10 gig switch. And I've got a 1 slash 10 gig core switch, which is still my Cisco SG350X that I've been running for a few years now and been really happy with both switches, no issues. I have flirted around with upgrading to 25 gig, but until I make the decision on if I'm going to upgrade my server hardware, I'm going to hold off on the switch side until I know what's going to change there. 10 gig has been fantastic. Highly recommend 10 gig networking if you're running virtualization in your home lab. On the server side of things, I still have my six Supermicro hosts that have been serving me well. Three of those are the Sys 5028 TN4T model Supermicros. Then I also have a Sys E300 9D Supermicro along with a Sys E301 9D Supermicro and another standalone Sys 5028 TN4T unit. So between those six Supermicro servers, I have a total capacity of 103 gigahertz 766 gigs of memory and 31.84 terabytes of storage. I also have on top of the 31.84 terabytes of storage, I've got 26 terabytes of storage on my Synology NAS device. So now onto the software side of things, and this is where things get really interesting. I love the hardware, but to me, the software is equally fascinating. So this year I have upgraded to VMware vSphere 8 both across my main vSAN cluster, as well as a couple of nested nodes that I use for testing. I'm also keeping some down-level vSphere 7 clients just for comparison sake and to 
take a look at features and functionality between those versions just for testing and other purposes. Along with VMware vSphere on the physical host side, I'm also running a slew of hypervisors nested inside virtual machines. Those include a couple of Proxmox VMs that I use for testing and other functionality. I've got a standalone Hyper-V server, as well as a Hyper-V cluster that I use also for testing. Outside of the hypervisors themselves, I'm also running four Docker hosts via virtual machines. And those Docker hosts are increasingly assuming many of my home lab services and workloads, and I have a lot of containers running. Uh, just some notables for you guys that I'm running inside of Docker. I've got Pi-hole, I've got Uptime Kuma, I'm running my unified network controller, I'm running ArcWatch, PyAlert, Gestio IP, IPAM management, I'm running a MailRise server, and I've got traffic, of course, running for my ingress controller. So lots of cool things that have been interesting to me running inside of my Docker host. I also run a VPN connector from Twingate inside of a Docker container as well, which is a really nice way uh, to spin those up. Outside of Docker hosts, I'm also running Kubernetes. What flavors of Kubernetes am I playing around with in the home lab? Well, I have three rancher controlled RKE clusters running on top of VMware vSphere virtual machines that I have running that are running right now test workloads and other workloads that I'm playing around with and will most likely be the target of production Kubernetes workloads that I decide to spin up in the future. So those RKE clusters are made up of Ubuntu virtual machines running the cloud image, as I have detailed in blog posts as well as videos in the past. And it's a great solution, and I love the simplicity of Rancher. Outside of Rancher, I'm also running a K3S cluster on three virtual machines, as well as a three-node micro Kates installation of Kubernetes. And recently, I just added to the family of Kubernetes distributions that I'm running in the home lab by spinning up a VMware Tanzu on vSphere installation. So I have a workload cluster enabled on my VMware vSyn cluster, and I'm going to have more videos on that process and running workloads on that in the future. But that has been a really cool project, and it's been awesome to get my hands on a proper Tanzu cluster to run workloads. Now on to monitoring. And I have made a lot of videos covering monitoring on this channel. And I think it's one of those aspects of IT operations that we cannot neglect. It's extremely important. I would say my main monitoring solution, the one that I covered most recently, is PRTG from Pestler. I absolutely love PRTG and it provides an awesome monitoring solution that keeps me informed on anything and everything going on in the home lab from my hosts to virtual machines to temperature to IPMI statistics and many other statistics and metrics and telemetry data from all the devices running across my networks. Also, I'm monitoring my camera network just to make sure that all of my cameras are up and running and many other use cases there. So PRTG is a fantastic solution along those lines. So PRTG is a fantastic, powerful monitoring solution. However, I'm also augmenting PRTG with many other monitoring solutions just from a standpoint of playing around as well as actually gaining additional data. Since I'm a VMware vSphere shop, I also run VMware vRealize operations. That has now been rebranded to VMware Aria operations. However, it's a great solution if you are running a VMware vSphere environment. It allows you to keep abreast of all of your uh, pertinent VMware vSphere statistics, operational information, performance data. And one thing I really like, especially if you're running VMware vSAN, is it has all of the native VMware vSAN monitoring built in along with dashboards and all of that good stuff. Now, granted, you can build a lot of that with open source solutions, but as far as just a simple turnkey solution to hit the ground running with a VMware vSphere environment, you really can't beat uh, vRealize operations slash VMware ARIA operations. Outside of vRealize operations, ARIA operations, I'm also running Uptime Kuma, which I also created a video on recently. And with Uptime Kuma, I'm monitoring a lot of my Docker containers, which it does extremely well. And I really like 
the simplicity of Uptime Kuma, as well as many of the features and functionality that go along with it. The notifications you get, dashboarding, all of that is just really fantastic with Uptime Kuma. I've also played around with Prometheus and Grafana, another video I've created. It's a great open source monitoring solution and you can literally build anything with Prometheus and Grafana. With all of those home lab services and applications and virtual machines, I personally think of backup as a critical component of my home lab. When I first started with a home lab, I didn't have a proper backup solution and I can't tell you how many times I crashed and burned other things that I thought were not critical. But then when I was actually tasked with recreating that work that I had done in the home lab, that was a chore. So I decided early on that I was going to implement backup solutions solutions. Now, I am running a wide variety of backup solutions, and these are enterprise backup solutions. Uh, they consist of Veeam Backup and Replication, BDR Suite by Vimbu, and then also Nikivo Backup and Replication. All three of those solutions offer either an NFR license or a not for resale license or a free license. And those are limited in the number of workloads, but like myself, if you run multiple backup solutions, I can essentially cover everything that I want with various backup solutions. And it's more management to do it that way. But in the same respect, you're actually learning multiple technologies, multiple solutions that I have personally seen in the field. Backups are absolutely critical. And those are the ones that I'm running in my lab environment. Guys, also, you have to check out my video on MailRise. That is what I have pivoted over to for notification services in the home lab. And I have not looked back a single time. MailRise slash Apprise are two solutions that have totally changed the paradigm of how I am notifying on critical alerts in my home lab and receiving those notifications reliably. So MailRise and Apprise have been a game changer for me. So check out my video on that if you want to pivot in your home lab, uh, your notification services. So guys, that is my February 2023 home lab tour and update for you guys. Hopefully some of what I am doing, you're finding interesting in your home lab and some of the ideas that I am implementing, you guys might find interesting as well. So what I wanna do is leave you guys with some RGB from my home lab. Stay safe out there, guys. Take care. I'm Brandon Lee. Like this video and please do subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys soon.